Okay, last one, last video, page number seven. Let's do this thing. So find the sine of A minus B when sine of A is equal to three-fifths in quadrant one and cosine of B is equal to negative 12 over 13 in quadrant three. This is a lot like a previous problem that we have seen. Um, so sine of A minus B, again, we get that from our identities right here, the difference formula. It's like the second one right over here. So it's sine cosine minus cosine sine. So we have the sine of A, cosine of B, minus the sine, uh, cosine of A, times the sine of B. I'm going to rewrite that, sorry. Okay, let's see what we've got. So they're already giving us some stuff. Sine of A is 3 fifths, so that's the 3 fifths right there. We've got to find the cosine of B. No, they give it to us. Negative 12, 13. That's cool. All right. But then we do need to find the cosine of A and the sine of B. So that's where, you know, the information is going to come in handy. So this is going to be in quadrant number one. So it's like this. And we've got a right triangle that pops up over there. And then it says that the sine of this angle is 3 fifths. So the opposite side is 3. The hypotenuse is 5. So the adjacent side is 4. So cosine is going to be, you know, adjacent over hypotenuse. So 4 fifths. Okay, sine of B. So it says that uh, B is in quadrant number three, so three is going to be the lower left one. And then we've got um, cosine. So cosine is going to be the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And that's part of a 5, 12, 13 triangle. So 5 is going to be here. And since it's pointing down, it's going to be a negative 5. So negative 5 over 13. Okay, uh, now we just let our calculator take care of the rest. So let's uh, work through this thing. So we got 3 fifths times negative 12 thirteenths, and then minus 4 fifths times negative 5 over 13. Okay, we get that number and then turn it back into a fraction, negative 16 over 65. Okay, cool. All right, given that the magnitude of V is equal to 13 and the angle is equal to um, 157.3801. Find the vertical component of the vector. So here's what it's saying. It's saying that like, you know, if you start at zero degrees, uh, 157 degrees would be like over here. And the magnitude's like way out here, 13. You gotta find the vertical component. So like this part right here, the Y component. So how do you find that? Well. You know, if we make this little right triangle here, we got to find that value y. We know that the hypotenuse is 13. And we just got to find this angle measurement right here. So if this is 157.3801, then, you know, obviously this makes a 180 degrees angle right here. So if we just want to find that angle right there, then it's going to be 180 minus 157.3801. Um, and then whatever that angle measurement is, uh, to find y, y is going to be the opposite side over the hypotenuse, so it's going to be sine. So we're going to do the sine of this angle that we're looking for, uh, and that's going to be equal to the opposite side, y, over the magnitude, which is 13. So let's go ahead and solve for this thing. Um, let's find the angle first. So it's going to be 180 minus 157.3801. So there's our angle, 22.6199. And then to get y by itself, all, all I would do is multiply both sides by 13. So 13 times the sine of 21.6199 is going to be equal to the y component for this. All right, so let's see what this thing is going to be equal to. All right, so 13 times the sine of the number that we just found, that's about 5. So there's the magnitude for it. An airplane is traveling in the direction of north 40 degrees west. Oh, man, it's been a while since I've done these ones. So it's north and then 40 degrees west. So that's going to be over here. So there's the 40 degrees from true north. So there's west, north. Okay, so it's going like there, okay, with a speed of 450 degrees. Calculate the velocity vector P of the plane. So the velocity vector P. Okay, so P... And they want us to just like write up the components basically for it. Okay. Um, yeah, no problem. So uh, if that's 40 degrees, that means that this is 50 degrees, right? And then we just make a right triangle with this. 
So if it's uh, 450 degrees for the magnitude, let me make that a little bit larger so you guys can see it a little bit easier. There's west, there's north, 40 degrees west of north means that this angle here is 50 degrees. And we're looking for like the components for this. So we got to find the Y component and the X component. Given that the magnitude, in other words, the, um, the hypotenuse is 450 degrees or 450 miles per hour. So we just got to find X and Y from this, okay? So, um, you know, uh, to find Y, we're going to use opposite side of 50 degrees and the hypotenuse, so that's sine. So the sine of 50 degrees is going to be equal to the opposite side, which is Y, over the hypotenuse, which is 450. So we're going to, you know, solve that. And then we've also got, you know, X. So X is the adjacent side for this, so it's going to be cosine that we're going to use of 50 degrees. That's going to be equal to X over 450. Okay, now we just use our calculator and we can find um, the velocity vector for this P. So let's do that. So we've got, um, oh wait, sorry, I didn't solve it yet, did I? Okay, so the next part is I multiply both sides by 450. So Y is gonna be equal to 450 times the sine of 50 degrees. And then X is gonna be equal to 450 times the cosine of uh, 50 degrees. Okay, so now let's find out what those are. I'm just gonna like put them over here, X and Y. Okay, so let's do the Y part first. So the Y part is 450 times the sine of 50 degrees. So it's about 344.72. I, I guess that's miles per hour. I should probably put the units in there. And then the X component is going to be the same thing but cosine instead, 450 times the cosine of 50 degrees. So that's 289.25. There we go. All right, there's the components. We just draw a triangle and then use simple trig to uh, find the component parts. That's the nice part about vectors, and that's why they're so widely used in um, physics. You can just break it into components, even in three dimensions. It's not that bad uh, to figure out where things are going. Um, okay, a baseball is thrown into the air with a velocity vector of 90, 30. What is the speed and the direction of the ball? So the speed is another name for the magnitude. So we just, you know, just like what we did before to find magnitude, it's just going to be Pythagorean theorem. So the magnitude squared is going to be equal to 90 squared plus 30 squared. So let's see what the magnitude is going to be equal to. So 90 squared is 8,100. 30 squared is 900. So it looks like that's going to be 9,000. So it's going to be the square root of 9,000, whatever that number is. And then, you know, uh, what was the speed? Did it say, no, it doesn't say like feet per second or anything like that. So I guess whatever the units are on it. And then the direction of this thing is going to be like the, the angle measurement that we have with, uh, you know, with the zero. So it's like, if you graph it out, it's going to be 90 in the X direction. So 90 here and 30 in the y direction. So we just gotta find this angle measurement here. That's the direction that they're talking about. So to find that, what we would do is, um, you know, just use common trig. So from this angle measurement, we have the opposite side and the adjacent side, so it's tangent. So the tangent of the direction angle is gonna be equal to opposite, 30, over 90 adjacent, um, which is, you know, a third. So if we wanna get uh, theta, the angle all by itself, you undo the tangent part. So to undo tangent, you use tangent inverse. So theta is going to be equal to tangent inverse of a third. And then, you know, you just um, use your calculator for that. And I guess they probably want degrees for this. So just leave it in, in degree mode for this. So tangent inverse of one over three. And then we round it to like maybe two decimal places or something. So 18.43 degrees. Okay, there you go. Um, which conic do the following equations represent? Is this the last one? All right, cool. So we got through all 40 questions. So um, when you're trying to determine what type of conic section that you're using, you always ask three questions, okay? 
So first off, uh, question number one. So do you have both x squared and y squared? If the answer is no, then that means that you've got a parabola. Okay. If the answer is yes, then you move on to question number two. So the second question. Um, next, uh, are x squared and y squared, do they have the same sign, S-O-G-N? So x squared and y squared, same sign. If you say no to that, then that means that the, the shape is a hyperbola. But if you say yes to that, then you ask question number three. And question number three goes like this. Do x squared and y squared have the same coefficient? So the number in front of them. If you say no to that, then that means that this shape is going to be an ellipse. But you only have to ask three questions, because if you say yes to that also, that means that this thing is going to be a circle. So these are the three questions that we're going to ask, and, and we'll do it in rapid succession. It'll be pretty quick, okay? So first question, do you have x squared and y squared? We do. So we go to the next question. Do they have the same sign? They don't. They have opposite signs. One is negative, one is positive. So we stop, because this is no to that same sign question, so this is a hyperbola. Okay, next one. Um, so do we have both an x squared and a y squared? Yeah, we do. Do they have the same signs? Yeah, they're both positive. So we move to the next question. Do they have the same coefficient? And yeah, they do that too because they both have ones in front of them. So that means that this thing is a circle. All right, now for the last one, uh, the last two. So do we have both x squared and y squared? Yes, we do. Do they have the same sign? Yeah, they're both positive. Do they have the same coefficient? No, they don't. So that makes this an ellipse. And then the last one. Do we have both an x squared and a y squared? Yes. Do they have the same sign? Yes, they're both positive. Do they have the same coefficient? No, they do not. One of them is one, the other one's four. So that makes this an ellipse. And that's it. So that's all 40 questions. Um, that's the last video. So that should prep you for the uh, uh, final exam. Uh, I hope this was helpful for you. If you have any questions about any individual problem that you saw worked out, uh, you know, just ask your teacher. Um, and that's it for me. So good luck on your final exam. Bye-bye.